Before buying a pattern, obviously you have to know what size to purchase. And conventional wisdom when fitting patterns is to measure around the circumference, around the bust line, and choose a pattern accordingly. Now if you have a model type figure, that's perfect. But if you have more ins than outs, well, maybe you'll end up with what I call gaposis. And this illustration exaggerates it a little bit, but it shows what may happen. The neckline may be too large, Shoulder seam fall off the shoulder, armhole too deep, get wrinkles underneath the arm, but yet it fits around the bust line. It's a little difficult to alter the shoulder area, but it's much easier just to change the bust line, which I'll show you in a few minutes. So I'd like to purchase a pattern to fit your shoulders. So to do this, we're gonna start off with a new measurement, perhaps to you, called the right size measurement. You'll need a sewing buddy to help you do this measurement. Don't measure on yourself. And put on a camisole and have your buddy measure above the crease in the arm across the front width to the other crease. You're not gonna find this measurement on the back of the pattern envelope. It's a measurement that kind of used through time. It works well and here's the simple way of determining what size you should get. Size 14 happens to be 14 inches, and it changes a half of an inch per size. So if we go down to 13 and a half inches, that would be a size 12. 13 inches, a size 10, so on and so forth. In the opposite direction, the same thing. If you know that 14 is a 14 inches, then a size 16 is 14 and a half. Size 18, you got it, is 15 inches. Now if you're thinking, oh, I'm, I'm really going down in sizes, well, just you can modify, just go down one size, but I assure you, you'll get a better fit, and I'll show you how to change the pattern in the circumference me measurements as we go along. So you have the right size, and you're gonna choose patterns that are simplified. We're not gonna choose something that has many pattern pieces when you, we start off with. You just want something very simple, Streamline, a simple top I'm wearing today, or a blouse that has a front, a back, sleeves, whatever you may like to use. Don't make it too difficult at first, because once you know your fitting formula, you can apply it to all other pattern pieces. It's that simple. So now that we have the right size, you're going to cut out the pattern that coincides with your size. When I first started teaching fitting, I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was, but you know, each pattern had a size in it. Each envelope had a size in it. Now everything is multiple sized, where the sizes are nested. This pattern happened to have six sizes, and, but I cut it out according to a size 10, cutting along the lines that coincided with the 10. So you're gonna cut out your front, back, sleeve, whatever the basic pattern pieces are for this measurement. And then after cutting out the, me the sizes, you can gather your tools. We'll be using this in our next segment, but they're very simple. You need, a you need a tape measure, obviously you know that. Some pins, two colors of marking pens, and tracing paper. That's it. Nothing detailed about this. Now the first measurements that you're going to need to do just to get the ins and outs of, of your pattern will be bust, waist, and hip. And again, use your sewing buddy, have your sewing buddy help you. And here's an illustration of working with the bust measurement. Just measure around the fullest circumference and you can see that simple measurement. Do not take it too tight, do not take it too loose. Maybe have your sewing buddy put a thumb or finger underneath the tape measure to get it just right and measure to the closest half of an inch. Do the same at the waist. Bend over to the side as you can see the illustration, to find the deepest wrinkle, it's your waist, and then measure around the circumference. I say measure to the closest half of an inch because you know what a piece of chocolate cake can do. So don't measure just perfectly to uh, 28 and 3 eighths inches. It's not going to work. Hips. Hips are generally nine inches below the waist, or, or and you can see the measurement there, and around the circumference. So you have the basics that we're going to start out with, bust, waist, and hip. And on my little chart, I have a little note that I re reference the back of my pattern envelope for what size 
the measurement was made for. Now, some companies have the measurements written on the envelope. Sometimes they're online. So you can just go to online to whatever pattern company it is, and you'll find out what size it's been made for. And that's what I have for the three measurements, bust, waist, and hip. I have my measurements, first of all, 38, 30, and 42. And then I have the size that the pattern was made for. And you can see they're smaller. And then the difference between the measurements, two, four, two, two, and four, is what I'm going to change to my pattern. Now you might think, this is a lot of work to make the changes. It's not going to be. But your pattern, your garment, will fit in your shoulders so much better if you buy the pattern to fit your shoulders rather, as I said earlier, than your ins and outs. So take a little time to do these basic measurements and then we're going to make the changes. In the intro, I mentioned that there were pivot points, or we're going to make the changes by pivoting and sliding the pattern. We need some little markings on the pattern. And with those markings, you can see these cross marks. And the first cross mark we need will be at the shoulder and in the underarm. And I marked them 5 eighths of an inch. This gauge is 5 eighths of an inch wide. And that's the seam allowance at the shoulder and also at the underarm. And now that I have my pattern ready, you'll get the idea as we go along. I'll show you next how to do the changes. Now that you have your pattern size determined, your pattern's cut out, measurements taken, now it's time to make some little fine tune adjustments onto your pattern to solve the pattern fitting mystery. To do this, we have I'm going to reference again to the measurements that I used, and I need to add two inches at the bust and waist. Now this pattern is really simple. It, it doesn't have any fitting at the hips, so we're just going to worry about the bust and waist. And we need to add two inches to both. So how do you determine what you add where? Well, there are two side seams, one on each side, and then the front and the back pieces. So your measurement is going to be divided by four. So just like when you're in third grade or wherever, you place that you have four side seams and we're going to add two inches. So that's two fourths or a half of an inch and you do not have to learn to write upside down. I just do that for you. So you can see you add a half of an inch on each side. I have several layers of tissue paper and with the marking pens be careful because it may go through several, may go through one layer of tissue paper. So that's why I have several layers here and working on a mat. The first step is to always trace the original pattern piece. Just trace around the sides, the armhole, and the side area. And I can trace a little closer than I'm doing right now. So we need to add just a half of an inch to the bust on each side and a half of an inch to the waist. So we'll measure out from the underarm a half of an inch and the same down here. Now if this had been three inches for the waist, you'd add three-fourths of an inch. You just whatever the measurement happens to be. You do the same tracing along the back. So whatever you added to the front, you add to the back, and then do the same measurement. So, so far, really simple. Now comes the technique that I like to call pivoting. It's like the fulcrum on a clock that pivots back and forth. You place a pin at the shoulder where the stitching lines cross. That's where we had the little X marked. It has 5 eighths of an inch seam allowances, so I put a pin in this area, and then pivot or move the pattern out so that it meets the increase mark, and then I'll just kind of do it hash mark, make it quicker, mark the armhole, go around the corner, and I'm going to pivot now to the waist change. Now if we look down way at the waist, you'll see that the pattern is pivoted beyond that measurement. So I'll just place the pin at the underarm where the stitching lines cross and align everything up. And then I'll just mark all the way down. And what I could do at, whoa, what I could do at this time is to mark the dart legs or the end and there's my change. Now I'd like to ask groups when I show them this, will the sleeve fit into this armhole? It doesn't look that way. If you look at this armhole change, and I'll maybe darken this line, when it's in the unpivoted position, it looks bigger. But notice I traced identical armhole shape, so it's going to fit. 
Whatever you do the front, you do the back when it comes to width changes. And again, I'll put a pin just to give you a reference. A pin, pivot to meet the increase, trace the armhole, then place a pin at the underarm, and go to the change, and presto, you're set. And here are the changes. Pretty simple, easy to work with, and you didn't have to cut apart your pattern piece. So if you wanted to do a different change or you didn't like what you saw, you still have your original pattern piece intact. Now if you didn't need to change the waist, let's say the waist was just the right size, well then you trace the pattern and maybe you can take a little bit more time at home to trace it accurately, measure out whatever you need to increase and I'll just guesstimate that half of an inch, trace to meet the increase and then follow the line. Now if by chance you had to change, make it smaller, you just pivot inward instead of outward and now it tapers down to the original cutting line. And there you can see the change. There you go. So whatever you do to the side seam in the front, you do to the side seam in the back. Now maybe you want to practice. Maybe you want to practice doing this. So we have some mini patterns for you. If you go online at nancyzeman.com, that's where you can watch all Sewing with Nancy videos, and you click on the videos. This program is called Solving the Pattern Fitting Puzzle. Click on our two episodes, and there you will find, you can print out lots of different mini patterns. We have 12 of them. And they're all the sizes we'll be using in these programs. And let me just show you what I have here. You're not going to do this now because then you'd miss the rest of the show, but you could do this at your convenience, re-watch the program, and then you can just practice with these little patterns the techniques so that when you need to do it later on, you can see it. So I'll reference these little patterns as we go along throughout this program. I'd like to show you another option. Let's say you had a hip change and let's just move this over. And I have a, another pattern piece that is long. It doesn't have a fitted waistline. It just has, you would fit the bust and the hip. And I think you might get the idea of what happens here. You trace the armhole and all the side. Now the hip is about nine inches from the waist. So I can measure out, let's say I need a half of an inch at the bust line. And then I think I needed four inches at the hip. Yeah, that's what I usually need. So the hip is approximately nine inches below. So I'll measure, since there are four side seams, I'd measure out one inch. So you can see the different changes. And then, I will do the pivoting. Pin goes at the shoulder where the stitching lines cross. I pivot out, trace the armhole. It's redundant, but I think you'll understand. And then you just angle it so that it meets your, you're connecting the lines, connecting the dots. And then you maintain the sta same style that the original designer wanted with the changes that fit you. Now you may want to change a dart. You saw a dart that we had earlier. The dart may be, need to be raised or lowered. And to change length, you're going to slide the pattern up and down. And you can see that sometimes the marking pen goes through all the layers. So that's why we have some double layers. And on this illustration, you can see that you have to try on the pattern. Pin the shoulder seams together, as you can see on the illustration and mark where the, you'd like your dart to point. And that's what I have measured on this particular pattern. So here you can see where the measurement is. The distance that it needs to be lowered is three-fourths of an inch. So to do length changes, to change the position of this, we're simply going to trace the hemline. So you get it anchored and you can trace all the way around. And then I'm going to slide this pattern down three-fourths of an inch because I'd like that dart, let me get the right end of the tape measure, here we go. I'd like that dart to be three-fourths of an inch lower. So I'll just slide it down and then continue to mark that dart. After I've marked the dart, bring it back up and it's lowered. 
So the now this new pattern piece is attached to your original pattern piece and you can cut it out with those changes. During this first episode, we're working with just the basics, bust, waist, and hip. If you're wondering about the sleeve and the shoulders, stay tuned for or tune in to our second episode. But we're just, I just want to make sure that you understand this technique. And when you're working with a princess style, is what this pattern showcases, there, is, there are extra seams. And this is great if you need gradual shaping, perhaps more than four inches on many sides. You can see this extra seam that goes down the middle and also in the back. These little mini patterns showcase what the pattern may look like where there's a front and then a side front. Here's the traditional side seam, the side back and the back piece. You can add in the middle section as we just did at the underarm seam, but then also you could add at the front piece and the back piece. Now I'm going to show you how that's added on the big pattern pieces, but you have eight seams now, eight side seams, not eight seams, but eight side seams, so divide your needed changes by eight. So here is the back, the, excuse me, the side front piece, and I've already added for, let's say you needed three inches at the, at the bust line area and eight cut edges, we'd add three eighths. If you needed eight inches for the eight side seams, you'd add one inch on each hip sides, and you can see that the gradual change has been made. But for this front piece, we need to find out where that bust line measurement is, so I just aligned up the two pattern pieces and marked approximately where the bust line would fall. So I placed a stitch or a pivot point, the intersection, it's basically marking the seam allowance where the seam allowance is at the shoulder. I guess I better measure out first, that would help. Okay, let's do some measuring. And measure out 3 eighths of an inch at the bust line area, 3 eighths, and then one inch at the hip line. And you pivot to the bust line change and draw the line. Now you might guess, you place the pin at the stitching line and pivot to angle the two together. It pivots like a fulcrum on the, on the old grandfather clock and draw it down. Gradual, subtle changes, but yet getting the widths to fit the measurements on your body. You do the same changes on the back pieces so that you just take it step by step, puzzle piece by puzzle piece, and soon you'll solve your pattern fitting issues.